hello everyone today in this video I'm gonna teach you how we can solve steady state one day heat diffusion equation with source term using finite difference method so one day heat diffusion equation with constant area and thermal conductivity is given by the equation number one where u is the temperature q is the heat generation k is the thermal conductivity and alpha is the thermal diffusivity since we are interested in finding the steady state solution for the equation number one and we we a, we know a priori that steady state solution exists for the equation number one we can find the steady state solution by just eliminating the time derivative term on doing so we end up with equation number two so Dirichlet boundary conditions are applied on both the boundaries so on the left boundary condition where x equal to zero u equal to ul and on the right boundary condition where x equal to l u equal to ur so to get the analytical solution we integrate the equation number two twice and plug the boundary conditions on doing so we reach the equation number three we're going to use this equation number three to validate the results that we get using finite difference method so coming to the numerical solution we use finite difference method to solve the equation number two so we make use of forward taylor series to find u at i plus one based on the values at u at i so using forward taylor series we can expand as in equation number four and using backward Taylor series, u at i minus 1 can be found using i as the pivot point, and it is given in the equation number 5. So, on adding equation number 4 and equation number 5, we reach equation number 6, and on rearranging, that is, we are interested in isolating the d square u by dx square at pivot point i because we are interested in solving d square u by dx square plus q generation by k equal to zero so on truncating the higher order terms and replicating just with the leading order term we can rewrite the equation number seven as equation number eight we can see that in equation number eight the order of error is delta x square which means if you reduce the delta x by a factor of 2 then your error drops down by a factor of 4 and we do find that since we are equally taking the information on either side of node number i that is we are taking information from u i minus 1 and u at i plus 1 so it's a central difference scheme and it's a second order accurate scheme so when we substitute the equation number 8 in equation number 2 we get the finite difference method or the finite difference equation for the nodes i equal to 2 to n minus 1 which are interior nodes so for the node number i equal to 1 we have the Dirichlet boundary condition that is u1 equal to ul and for the node number n that i equal to n un equal to ur right boundary conditions Note that since we are using the Dirichlet boundary conditions, we do not need any additional equations. So we're going to use iterative solvers and we will be focusing on the two main methods, Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel. So there are some basic steps involved in iterative techniques. We generally start with the initial guess for the solution. It could be anything see it could be zeros also but what i want to make the point here is see intelligent guesses can lead to faster convergence of your solution so i will prove that in the next video so the second step is to calculate the new values of variable at the node of interest 
here the node of interest is i index i so and it depends on the iterative technique we repeat the step 2 for node number from i equal to 2 to n minus 1 since it's a 1d problem and we update the solution vector to use it as a guess values for the next iteration and step number 5 we repeat the steps from step number 2 to 4 until our solution converges so we can you will understand that in a moment for doing so we isolate the variable at the node of interest on one side and the remaining terms on the other side note here that the superscript k denotes the iteration index so first we will start with the jacobi u at 1 equal to ul which is the dirichlet boundary condition that we have and u at i equal to 5 is also known see in order to make you understand i just considered the phi nodes so u at 2 so k has k represents my iteration index so u to at k plus 1 we can be written as u 0 0.5 times u1 at the iteration number k see note that u1 at k and u1 at k plus 1 is same because it's a boundary condition and same for the u at i equal to phi also so let's assume that we start with the initial guesses of zeros so u2 u3 u4 will be zeros so u2 at k plus 1 can be computed from this equation so which will be equal to 0 0.5 times u1 at k which is always equal to ul plus u3 which is 0 we are initializing that with 0 plus q by k into delta x square so we solve this for the node number 3 and 4 also and what we do is we take this lhs values which are at iteration number k plus 1 and we copy these values to the iteration number k so that this the left hand side will be plug it on the right hand side we plug them on the right hand side to get the new initial guess values and we repeat this process until the difference between uh, the variables at k plus 1 iteration and kth iteration falls below a predetermined tolerance value so coming to the gauss seidel there is only a small modification is there from jacobi to gauss seidel so what we do in gauss seidel is so u for the equation number u2 at k plus 1 remains same but u3 at k plus 1 will become 0 0.5 times u2 at k plus 1 because we already know this value we, di we directly update this value here so we get a new guess value for the u3 at k plus 1 so in a similar way u4 at k plus 1 iteration will be calculated based on u3 at k plus 1 because it has already been calculated in this in the second step only so when we loop through from i equal to 2 to 4 we assign u for i equal to 2 to n minus 1 of k plus 1 iteration to u at i at k see it may be little confusing but your doubts will be clarified when we code this in matlab so i will Leave the link for this document in the description. Thank you. Bye.